Hey, what's up, guys? It's your Malaysian boy Fred House here, talking to you about the pinnacle of motorsport, Formula One. As always, before we get on with this video, don't forget to subscribe and smash that notification bell so that you won't miss any more videos like this one. Yeah, like this one you're watching right now. Well, let's get on to the video. The second Mercedes seat, question that has long lingered in the minds of Formula 1 fans. Ever since the debut of one fine young Briton in last year's Sahir Grand Prix, none other than Mr. Friday to Saturday himself, George Russell. Once rumours, which now became news, that there was the possibility for this young lad to finally step up into the big team and start winning races. But should the German outfit ditch their long-time Finn driver Valtteri Bottas for a new up-and-coming world champion? Though Bottas has had one of his worst seasons so far, I wouldn't go as far as to fully Put the blame on him as he's experienced a fair share of errors and mishaps from a nut stuck on his tyre in Monaco up to the bad strategy call of only going for two stops in La Castellet. Why the f*** all of this to me when I said it's gonna be a two stopper? F***ing hell. Well, here are my thoughts on why Mercedes will actually choose Bottas over Russell. That is, for now, at least. It is a very well-known fact that Mercedes is built around its star driver Sir Lewis Hamilton and has been so for the past 9 years and still counting. Throughout those years, only one driver has successfully challenged his championship position, who is of course none other than the 2016 world champion himself, Nico Rosberg. In 2016, fans were in awe as they witnessed one of the greatest championship battle dramas in Formula 1 that resulted in this. Here we go and it's Nico Rosberg and Hamilton's onto the grass and Hamilton's had a massive crash and he's crashed into his teammate. The two Mercedes come together. Surely Mercedes wouldn't want a repeat of this kind of incident anymore. Even Toto Wolff himself said that if the debriefing room is full of negativity because the two drivers are hostile with each other, then that will spill over into the energy in the room. And that is not something I will ever allow again. Clearly, there's that risk of Russell coming in and once again intensifying the rivalry in the team which may once again lead to what Toto says, the negative environment. And this is where Bottas comes into the picture as in reality, he is a good driver, just um not good enough to beat Lewis but that's okay because he is a great number 2 driver and always has been. It's just that people never really saw him from that perspective. Unlike Rubens Barrichello who drove alongside Michael Schumacher and Ferrari yet was highly respected and applauded as a phenomenal number 2 driver. Though I understand why everyone, including me, don't seem to see Bottas as the driver for Mercedes as he's been passed on the mantle and expectation to again beat Lewis just like how Nico once did. But you've got to realize that having both star drivers is not always the best way to go as Ross Braun even says that it is lethal for a Formula 1 team, especially a dominant one like Mercedes, who are very much knowledgeable and experienced in that matter. Up to us this moment in time, it is evident that Bottas is slowly beginning to accept his role of being the second driver. So why risk the healthy and positive environment that has been sustained at Mercedes ever since Nico's departure, right? Yeah, well most would argue that it's time for George Russell to shine and Mercedes to focus on its future and new star driver. But another year or two wouldn't really hurt. Or would it? <laughs> As Mercedes would potentially only extend Bottas' contract for another year to see how things would go and Russell wouldn't really be in a bad position himself in my opinion as Williams are gonna increase their technical partnership with Mercedes next season and with new owners Doralton Capital the team will definitely be in the midfield mix minimum that's bare minimum especially with the new regulations coming in that's definitely going to mix up the grid once again. Although Russell has previously shown his worthiness of the seat with his Mercedes stint last season and his multiple Q3 appearances which is an almost impossible feat to achieve with one of the slowest cars on the grid, there's still much of him to look forward to even if he doesn't get that Mercedes seat. Despite Helmut Marko claiming that he would consider him if he were not given the seat at the German outfit, that just seems like a cheeky statement, like he always does, to mess up the driver's market. 
because why would he do so and risk Red Bull's position, specifically his beloved driver Max Verstappen. He's finally got a second driver who can support Max and deliver to the team when needed. Everything considered, Mercedes' decision would likely be skewed towards keeping Bottas in the seat. That is, for now at least. Although, I would love for it to be otherwise. What do you think Mercedes' decision is going to be? The all Brit driver lineup or the... James, it's Valtteri. Combo, maybe even the contract, has been signed all along between Russell and Mercedes. And that's why he's been hinting about it ever since. But after watching this interview, yeah, you know, it's we're coming into a summer break. <laughs> Sorry. Gosh, Russell really can't hide his secret, eh? Well, looks like everything that I've just said just now was just total bull. And Russell's work is a thousand percent confirmed. Leave your thoughts down on the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Keep smiling, and see you guys on the next video. Peace.